that actually happens because sometimes people who serve, you know, like they, they really don't know. Thank you, but Jesus. That actually happens because sometimes people who serve, you know, like they, they really don't know. Thank you, but Jesus juices for health freedom. Her name is, you are, some of you all know her, she was a member of Harvest. Her name is Tanikia Pope. And so she's going to talk about Jesus Juice, and she's going to tell you all about it. So can everybody come in and have a seat? Let's come come in. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It's happy, happy to be home again. I was a member of Harvest. Um, good to see so many familiar faces again. Uh, let's just start out with a prayer, really quick prayer. Um, Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this gathering. We ask that you just open up our hearts to receive what you have to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I say that because um, I like to start out these teachings because they uh, are very pretty new to a lot of people. Uh, to encourage you to treat it as a good chicken or fish dinner, you know. Um, keep the meat, spit out the bones if there's something that you feel like you, know, you might not agree with. Um, you know, spit it out. But there, I'm, I'm sure there's something here for everyone. Okay? All right, and before I get started, last time I was here I had a bunch of other people's books. I am a book publisher. But this year I'm here with my own book, Jesus Juice. Okay? And uh, Jesus Juice for Health and Freedom. And it is, it starts off with my testimony, but it's really a discipleship book for um, anyone experiencing or needing any freedom health wise, um, spiritually, emotionally, just really everything. Um, yes. Okay. And also, let me just I, I thank you for just your, your patience with us. This, we usually, I'm with the women's group of Mount Vernon, and we usually have Jesus Juice meetings every quarter. So this is serving, this is a combined meeting for us. Um, and so that's why you see the, the camera. Um, I also have a TV show on Fairfax Public Access, so parts of uh, my presentation will be viewed there. If you want to catch, out, catch up with the, um, the TV show, our next recording will actually be airing May 1st. It's called Community Chat. I believe it's at 5 p.m., but just go mm -hmm. to Fairfax Public Access and check their online schedule. You'll see when uh, Community Chat will be airing, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, all of you should also have what I call a ministry help. I'm going to give you a lot of information, and this is going to um, assist us as we go through the information. I, I used to do PowerPoint presentations, but I think this is good because you can keep it, take it home with you and study, and the scriptures are already on here, so let's get started. I want to start by first discussing John 8:36. Okay, can we read that together? It's under letter B. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Okay? And all of the scriptures, my Bible study, comes from two sources that I want to share with you. Uh, the King James Version of the Bible, and this is a strong, complete concordance. Okay? To research the original Greek and Hebrew of the Bible. Okay? And so, in, in this scripture, what I discovered in my Bible research is that the two frees actually have different meanings. Okay? Um, it says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, the first free means uh, to kind of soothe the pain or to liberate or deliver. But the second free actually means freedom, okay? And so uh, a lot of what I'm discussing comes from a ministry in Georgia called Be In Health, which states that 80% of incurable diseases have a spiritual root cause. And so today we are going to discuss the spiritual root causes of uh, allergies and food sensitivities as it relates to uh, this scripture. 
Okay, and if you'll notice on, on Jesus Juice, you see for health and freedom. It's two separate things. It goes with the free and the free. Um, and so, I don't know how many of you have heard my testimony, but I was, when I was a member here at Harvest, um, it was at the lowest point of my life. Uh, maybe five, six years ago, I was going through a divorce. I had miscarriages. I was facing homelessness unemployment, pretty much everything imaginable, um, negative, was, was really what I was going, what was going on with me. Um, and, and because of that, I, my immune system plummeted, okay? And I was to the point, I became allergic and sensitive to everything, just about everything. There was only one safe food for me. And um, I was talking with Sister Mary, I don't see her in here, but a lot of people around here remembers me as being able to only eat sweet potatoes. And that's true. That was the only safe food for me was, was the sweet potatoes. Okay? And um, even with the, the chemicals, I had problems with showering um, because the chlorine in the water would aggravate me. I was just hypersensitive to everything. Okay? But God. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm here today because I am free. Um, when you saw me, maybe when I was at Harvest, I was probably, I don't know, about 70 pounds lighter or something like that. <laughs> so I've just been getting my food, my foods back <laughs> and uh, have the weight to show it. Praise God, that's, that's health. <laughs> okay, and so going back to this scripture, I learned a lot of things um, in that trying time of my life. I learned one that doctors can give you can make you free and that's the first free okay I went to doctors I went to oh let me see I, I think I was at a cardiologist I was seeing um, an allergist I was seeing um, a neurologist primary care physician OBGYN I had so many doctors and they pretty much gave me a diagnosis uh, they gave me some kind of a drug, some kind of prescription, and they gave me a list of things I could and couldn't do. Okay? And so, but the symptom that I went there for, it, it helped. They helped to relieve that symptom. I just had some side effects. And, you know, I, I, I got into a position where I had to manage the side effects of the drugs and all that. So I did learn that doctors can make us free. Um, another thing I learned is that Vitamins and, mineral, vitamins and supplements can also give us a, a sense of freedom. Because guess what? When I um, became unemployed, I lost my health insurance, and I turned to vitamins and supplements and nutrition as, uh, as an alternative. And I had a natural remedy for everything. Uh, really is almost as if I was becoming a witch doctor because I, because I you know, I, I started prescribing things for other people, you know, what's, what's your symptom, take this, take this vitamin, take this supplement. And I thought that it was better and I was excited because it didn't have, you know, it wasn't as harsh as the drugs that I had been taking. Um, but I still had a very restricted diet. Um, and I was also bound by taking these uh, vitamins and, and, and supplements. I remember wanting to go overseas and thinking to myself, wow, I can't even go because I don't have, you know, what if they don't have sweet potatoes there, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, yeah, the, the vitamins and the supplements, um, they did help uh, ease the symptoms, but I was still bound in a, in a sense, okay? So now let's talk about the second free in, in John 8, 36, which says, you shall be free indeed. That free is a freedom um, that I experience now. I'm happy to say that I haven't had to take any prescription drugs um, or vitamins or supplements in, in several years now. Okay, and I'm still alive. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think it was like last month, um, I had a problem where I thought I might have needed some Tylenol. I went to go find some, and the pack that I found was expired, okay? So I praise God for divine health. And the free, that's freedom. That's, that's freedom that 
only came to me through Jesus Christ. Okay, and applying the principles in his word. And so that's what I want to teach, with you, to teach to you today, uh, or share with you, just how the process is of becoming free in that regard. Okay, so the teaching on uh, food sensitivities and allergies comes from primarily one scripture, which is, you'll see it under letter C, it's Proverbs 17.22, which reads, uh, let's read it together. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Okay, and you'll see in brackets I have H3001. Again, that goes back to the concordance because it's very important to know the original Hebrew meaning of those words. And so here we, we see that dryeth means utterly wither away the bones. And I, I really am in, have enjoyed some of the presentations earlier before me because um, the Bible is not against science, okay? Science actually confirms the Bible, okay? And so when we talk about a broken spirit drieth the bones, that is the spiritual root cause of allergies and food sensitivities. Why? Because guess what's in our bones? In our bones is bone marrow, right? What's in our bone marrow? Our immune system is in our bone marrow. Okay? So, you know, <laughs> the Bible, God knows what he's talking about. He created us, okay? And we were fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully meaning that our bodies were created to respect him and his word. And when we fall out of agreement with what God says, there are consequences called this ease, like the gentleman said before, okay? So allergies actually start in our immune system, okay? And this is all under letter C. And you'll see a couple of other uh, scriptures that you can read in your own time about our immune system that's highlighted in the Bible. Okay, so we're dealing with the second portion of Proverbs 17:22, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. And we're using that to explain allergies and food sensitivities, okay? Um, and I, let me just stop here. The best part of healing God's way, in my perspective, is that it's free, <laughs> okay? It's free. I'm like the person who spent all their money on cures and with no results. I mean, I, I, I ended up more bound, okay? Okay, so this is free. Okay, so let's go to, um, and like, like my brother said here, if, if it doesn't work, what's the, you know, yeah. <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? You can fall out of agreement with some sin, but anyway. Okay, so a broken spirit. Let's talk about a broken spirit because it's, it says that, the scripture says that a broken spirit is the cause of uh, our damaged immune system. So what is a broken spirit? Now I share with you some of my testimony um, as you can see, it was a lot of things going on in my life, um, and I had a broken spirit. I had a broken spirit. There are three elements to a broken spirit that I'd like to discuss today. Uh, the first is idolatry, okay? And these are things that can lead to a broken spirit, specifically not idolatry, but sorrow from idolatry, okay? And before you tune me out saying I'm not worshiping a, a statue or, you know, that's what people commonly think about when we, when we think about when we discuss idolatry, Ezekiel 14 tells us that uh, we can build idols in our hearts, okay? And so also another thing about idolatry that we don't consider is it's not exclusive, meaning that... Um, you know, just because we're praying, we're worshiping God, we're going to church regularly, doesn't mean that we're worshiping something else in our hearts. Okay? All right, so let's see. On this sheet, I've listed some possible idols. Uh, if you'll look under letter D, which includes power, approval, material possessions, comfort, organizations, control, sex, work, independence, achievement, race and culture, religion, family, relationships, suffering, images, and more. 
okay? All of these things are not bad in and of themselves, right? They become a problem when we reverence them above God and God's word. Now, you may not, if it's in your heart, this is a heart check that we have to do on our own. Uh, you may not, you know, be praying to these things, but if it's on your heart more than God is on your heart, then it's an idol, okay? All right, and um, the other thing I want to point out from here is uh, a broken spirit. Let's see, Psalms four, Psalm 16.4, which is on your sheet, it says, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Okay, so um, having those, those idols <laughs> sets you up for sorrow. And idols, any idol, it's, on, it's gonna eventually fail us because it's not God, okay? All right, and so some possible, uh, what gets a lot of us in trouble, um, especially women, I think, from my experience, is relationship idols, okay? And I, I do work with the Women's Group of Mount Vernon, so that's probably where my head is most of the time, is on relationships, um, because we work with domestic violence survivors and victims and overcomers. Um, but here are some possible relationship idols from the Bible that we see. Um, so Rachel could have been an idol to Jacob, okay? Because, you know, at first glance, we, we, we think, oh, that's so sweet. He worked all those years for her, and, you know, I want somebody to work that long for me. But, <laughs> but some of the research that I found is that was very excessive, you know, for him to do that, to work all those years. So it could have been that she could have been an idol to him. And also Esau could have been a possible idol to Isaac, okay? All right, so the second part of uh, broken spirit includes words. And here we're discussing verbal abuse, okay? Proverbs 26, 22, let's read that together. Uh, it's on the top of page two. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Okay, so words can create a broken spirit. Words like, you're stupid, okay? Or it could be words that we say to ourselves, I'll never amount to anything. Or it can be something like, he's too weird. Anything that goes against God's word has the ability to create a broken spirit. I don't know about you, but coming up, we used to sing a song or a chant that said, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. It's a lie. Words do hurt. <laughs> they hurt really bad. And like I said, I, I work with the women's group of Mount Vernon. Um, Ms. Maddie is the founder. If you'll wave your hand back there, we have some resources. And we work with um, domestic violence, survivors, victims, overcomers. And any of them will tell you that overcoming the, the verbal abuse is much more difficult than overcoming the physical abuse, okay? All right, so the words have a, um, the potential to create a broken spirit. These are all things that can create a broken spirit which damages our immune system. And the last thing that can create a broken spirit is victimization. And this is physical, emotional, financial, sexual, mental abuse against our will. And particularly with this one, we're talking about children and minors, rape victims, elderly abuse, etc. These are people who couldn't help the situation. But still, it has the, uh, the potential to create a broken spirit. Okay, but we're going to deal with that broken spirit today. It's no problem. All right, so that's, that's the first part of uh, just overcoming allergies and food sensitivities. The second part of it is ungodly fear, okay? Let me just show you my demonstration. I think I was supposed to do it earlier. I'm not even looking at my outline, um, but I'm going to have to put this down. Okay, so let's say this is your spirit, okay? This apple is your spirit, okay? And then you have something which is like the sorrow from an idol or, you know, verbal abuse that wounds your spirit. Then you have an opening in your spirit just like this, 
Okay? Everybody says it's just a, a hole in the apple. Okay, so that's, that's our broken immune system. It's dangerous because now the devil can creep in. Okay? He takes advantage of the situation. We all know that he comes, he's a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And in the case of food, and it can manifest in, in, in many different things, um, but in the case of food sensitivities and allergies, the primary evil spirit, or you can call it unrighteousness, um, that comes in is a spirit of fear, ungodly fear. Okay? And so, ungodly fear is rooted in not receiving God's love. All right, so there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And then there's 2 Timothy 1, 7, which is a familiar scripture. If we can read that all together. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, so we see that God doesn't want us to have ungodly fear. Um, but I want to explain to you how this works. I, I like to call it uh, the devil's fear class, <laughs> okay, um, that a lot of us end up enrolling in, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, okay, so he takes advantage of our weakened immune system. Um, the devil can actually give us physical symptoms. You know, take a look at Job, right, through his temptation, the devil put physical symptoms on him, okay? And it's one thing, if you don't remember anything else from this talk that I'd like for you to take away is, I believe that all sickness and disease is temptation, okay? And we are not to agree with temptation. Yeah, we have, you know, diagnosis. I'm not saying ignore that. I'm, yes, go to the doctor, get diagnosed. Um, understand, don't deny that you have symptoms. I'm saying don't agree with it in your heart. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because God says he heals us of all our diseases. So if we are agreeing that we're going to have this disease forever and there's no hope for us, then we're disagreeing with what God says. Okay? And that's also giving the devil um, the, the right to torment us with the disease. Okay? And so in the case of allergies and food sensitivities, it kind of works like this. Hmm. Let's say that I'm allergic to um, a peanut, okay? Uh, but I wasn't always allergic to peanuts, but you know, I eat some peanut butter one day and then I have an allergic reaction. And you know, the devil actually, he doesn't read our mind. He's looking to see what we can do, we're gonna do, he's watching us. Okay, so he's looking to see if you're gonna panic, what you're gonna do, if you're gonna reach for the, the pills or whatever. Um, or if you're going to, you know, go to God and ask him what's going on with you. So let's say um, you notice that, you know, you had some type of allergic reaction to peanuts and you ran to the doctor and, you know, that was like, yeah, okay. So you get um, confirmation that you have this peanut allergy and, you know, now you're what? Afraid of peanuts, right? When God never said, I mean, in his word, did he ever tell us to be afraid of anything? Like the devil, like I said, he's a, he's a thief. And the first, thing that, um, the first thing that he tries to take is our, what, milks and sugars, right? When in the Bible, when they were going to the promised land, where did they go? To a land flowing with milk and honey. That doesn't sound like it's supposed to be a bad thing for us, right? So, you know, we have to be mindful of what God says and put God first, okay? Um, when we have symptoms and things like that, uh, you know, not saying don't go to the doctors or anything like that. Sure, do that, but go to God first. In the Old Testament, there was actually somebody who died, King Asa, I think, um, died because he went to a physician before he went to God. Okay? And I'm not saying in a case of emergency, you know, you pray on your way to the hospital. But definitely go to God and ask God what's going on in our bodies. All right? Um, another example of this from my, my own personal history is, and this was before what happened, you know, five, six years ago, maybe ten years ago, I had an employer that I was afraid of. I didn't know I was afraid of it at the time. At the time. 
But every time I would be in the presence of this employer, my nose start running, <laughs> my eyes start watering. I mean, it was a full-blown allergic reaction. And, you know, this person asked me what was wrong, and I said, oh, I have allergies, you know. But I only had allergies in their presence, <laughs> okay? And I never put one and one together to, you know, connect the fact that I was afraid of this person. And, you know, that the fear is what was causing the, the allergic reaction. Now, you know, now, now that I know, of course, that's not the case. But even, okay, some of you may know that I was healed of lupus discoid, too. Um, and a bunch of other things. But the lupus discoid, that went away fairly quickly without much effort. The food sensitivities and the allergies, it took me about two years to get through this. Because like I said, I had been enrolled in the devil's fear class. And I had to do a renewing of my mind. And he still tries to tempt me sometimes, OK? Like I said, with the, um, you know, and being in the presence of someone that I may be afraid of, which I'm, I'm walking out of fear of man, OK? Um, when I get those symptoms, I don't reach for the antihistamine anymore. I handle it in my heart. And I tell the devil, I fall out of agreement with fear, get away from me, and then I take my peace. And guess what? The symptoms go away. OK? All right, so you know, the devil can make our body react to all sorts of allergens. Um, but like I said, you know, we have to get out of the devil's fear class by changing our response to the allergic reaction. Um, and we have to learn how to resist instead of panic. All right. And the, the cure for fear is to trust God. You know, fear comes from not being able to receive God's love for us. We have to know that no matter what's going on in our lives, God has us. He has our back. You know, Christ said to be with, you know, to be with you is here is Christ and, you know, to die is, to, is gain, right? So what's the worst thing that can happen? We die and go to heaven, right? <laughs> We're believers, right? So we shouldn't have any fear. If God be for us, who can be against us, right? All right, but it's a process because everything in this world is training us in this fear, okay? And then we're, we're taught that fear is just a negative emotion instead of an evil spirit, okay? Because in, in the Bible it says a spirit of fear, not an evil emotion of fear, okay? Okay, so let's talk about healing the broken spirit and getting rid of fear. Uh, Healing and deliverance, there's pretty much three steps to the process, which includes repentance, because as I mentioned before, our body comes out of line. Uh, when, when we're out of line with God's word, we get that dis-ease. Okay, so repentance is just changing our mind and getting back into agreement with what God says. So repentance is just saying, okay, I understand God, the fear is bad, I'm not going to, I don't want to participate with that anymore. And it's not that it's going to happen overnight or instantly. Um, you can be delivered instantly, but that evil spirit, the spirit of fear will come back to tempt you. Okay. And, but you just have to know how to handle it. We have to know how to handle it when it comes back. Okay. So we are going to, this is just a, a deliverance prayer, a short deliverance prayer. And we are going to uh, deal with the spirits of fear, idolatry, verbal abuse, and victimization against our will. And it's a faith thing, okay? Uh, we just have to remember that, uh, you know, if we, the word says that if we ask for forgiveness, God is faithful to forgive us, okay? And um, any of you who have been in the Jesus Juice workshop before know that we have a base ingredient. Before we do anything, our, you know, our prayers of repentance and, you know, getting back and our healing is all includes one base ingredient. Does anybody remember what that base ingredient is? Forgiveness, forgiveness right, right, right. The reason it being forgiveness is because God says that 
if we don't forgive, he won't forgive us. Okay? So, and that's on the, the paper. It's Matthew 6.15. So, before we go and deal with these spirits concerning um, allergies and food sensitivities, I'd like to lead you in a prayer of um, concerning unforgiveness so that we can get that out of the way and there's no block to our healing. Okay? Uh, I'm going to use a prayer from the book and you can just have in your heart, you don't have to say the person's name aloud. Um, when I come to the blanks, just, you know, you have a situation, whatever God brings to your heart, just, you know, offer it up to him. Uh, so, if you'll just repeat after me, Father God, please forgive me for agreeing with the spirit of unforgiveness. I forgive myself for agreeing with the spirit of unforgiveness. Also, I forgive, and this is when you go down your list, some people have lists <laughs> in your heart. <laughs> Think of that person in the situation. Let's forgive them. Amen. I release them. I release them. He or she, he or she doesn't, owe me anything. doesn't owe me anything. Thank you, God, Thank you, God for, forgiving me. for forgiving me. Okay, so that's it. We'll take care of that unforgiveness. Right. Now we can actually uh, discuss the spirits of fear, idolatry, verbal abuse, victimization against our will. Okay, so I'll give you just a second to review um, numbers two through eight. Those are the things we're going to say. We're going to take these spirits one at a time. And I just want to make sure you're in agreement with all this. And something else I want to mention, um, sometimes we have symptoms because of things that were done in our generations. A lot of people, you know the doctor always looks for uh, a history of X, Y, and Z. Well, I've come to know that as iniquity that's passed down through the generations, okay? And so we can get rid of that too, no problem. It's just, you know, the same repentance prayer. Um, I repent, I don't know, you know, I don't know specifically, some things you can, you can identify in your parents or your grandparents or, you know, um, other things you can't, I just take it, I repent for everything, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't go by asking them things just in case they did it, um, that's, that's been helpful for me. Okay, so let's start with fear, in the blank we're going to say fear. Father God, well let's do it together, Father God. I realize I or someone in my generations may have been agreeing with the spirit of fear. Please forgive me for agreeing with the spirit of fear. I forgive myself for agreeing with the spirit of fear. I don't want anything to do with the spirit of fear. I hate it, Father, because you hate it. Help me not to entertain fear anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I realize I have the power over fear, and I cast it out of my life forever into its dry place. Go, go, go. Amen. Just take some deep breaths. Thank you, God, for delivering me from the spirit of fear. Okay. And so, you know, this is nothing deep. You don't have to close your eyes. This is just you have to mean it in your heart. Okay, let's do uh, idolatry if you know if it if it applies. Okay, number two, Father God, I realize I or someone in my generations may have been agreeing with the spirit of idolatry. Please forgive me for agreeing with the spirit of idolatry. I forgive myself for agreeing with the spirit of idolatry. I don't want anything to do with the spirit of idolatry. I hate it, Father, because you hate it. And this is key. I'm just going to stop right here. We have to hate sin because God hates it. That's when the deliverance comes. You can't be playing with it like, oh, I, I like a little bit of bitterness in my life. You know? <laughs> no, you have to have a perfect hatred for it. Okay? All right. Help me not. And then uh, this other one, uh, you know, 
God is there to help us. We're not doing this on our own, okay? Help me not to entertain idolatry anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I realize I have power over idolatry, and I cast it out of my life forever into its dry place. Go, go, go. Take deep breaths. Thank you, God, for delivering me from a spirit of idolatry. And then abusive words, or let's just do verbal abuse. Father God, I realize I or someone in my generations may have been agreeing with the spirit of verbal abuse. Please forgive me for agreeing with the spirit of verbal abuse. I forgive myself for agreeing with the spirit of verbal abuse. I don't want anything to do with the spirit of verbal abuse. I hate it, Father, because you hate it. Help me not to entertain verbal abuse anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I realize I have power over verbal abuse, and I cast it out of my life forever into its dry place. Go, go, go. Thank you, God, for delivering me from a spirit of verbal abuse. A lot of people don't realize it's something that a teacher may have said to them in their childhood or a parent, you know, that have marked them as something um, that has really crushed your spirit. And this, this, this will help to get rid of it, okay? And then the last one, victimization against our will, okay? Father God, I realize I or someone in my generations may have been agreeing with the spirit of victimization against our will. Please forgive me for agreeing with the spirit of victimization against my will. I forgive myself for agreeing with the spirit of victimization against my will. I don't want anything to do with the spirit of victimization against my will. I hate it, Father, because you hate it. Help me not to entertain victimization against my will anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I realize I have power over victimization against my will, and I cast it out of my life forever. Into its dry place, go, go, go. Thank you, God, for delivering me from spirit of victimization against my will. Okay, so the second step is to receive forgiveness. This is equally as important as repentance. We have to believe that um, God has forgiven us and we have to forgive ourselves. Okay, um, so, you know, 1 John 1, 9 again says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to ask God to heal our broken heart or our broken spirit. Okay, Psalm 51, 17, let's read that together. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. So just repeat after me. It's simple. Um, Father, God, Father God, please heal, please heal my, broken spirit. my broken spirit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So it's simple, right? It's just, a, it's a faith walk, okay? It doesn't take a lot of, you know, nothing. It's, it all happens in your heart and in our minds, okay? And so the last step is also very important in this, to resist. Okay, because, you know, there's a scripture that says when, when the evil spirit is cast out, uh, he goes out, you know, roaming to and fro, and when he sees there's no place else to go, he tries to come back in. Okay, so if you feel the same symptoms, it doesn't mean you were never uh, delivered. It just means he's trying to come back in. Okay, and so um, James 4, 7 helps us with that. It says, submit yourselves to God, therefore... Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, like, that's the example that I gave before, you know, when, I was, when I'm experiencing those symptoms. I just have to have a side conversation with the devil under my breath, out loud, you know, like, look, you got to go. <laughs> you know, you are gone. Get away from me. And it's, it's true. He, he does flee. Eventually, he will flee. Um, what I'd say is, if you have like allergies or food sensitivities now, or um, you know, stay under your physicians. If you're under a physician's care right now, work with them to get free. If something develops that's new, 
I wouldn't run to the doctor right away, me personally. I would try to handle it, you know, if it's not life-threatening. But I would try to handle it in my heart first. And like I said, I haven't been to the doctors. I mean, after that episode, you know, I, I, it's just amazing. Like when I, I do go to my, you know, annual exam, and they're always asking me, you know, what drugs I'm on. I'm like, none. They're like, looking at me crazy. <laughs> Um, but praise God, that's by God's grace, you know, I don't take advantage of that or take that for granted. Um, okay, and so now I am going to say a, a prayer of healing over your immune system, and that is listed in letter G, okay? So just, you know, receive it, just receive it. Okay, so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak healing to your immune system. I, com I command your bone marrow to produce the white blood cells to destroy anything harming your body. I command your body to come back into balance and to function as God intended from the foundations of the world. If there are creative miracles needed, I call it forth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay? Amen. All right, so just receive that and, and, and walk in it. And, I'm just about done, but there's two things that I cannot leave you without discussing. And they, these are two total blocks to healing. Um, the first is self-pity. And what's self-pity? Feeling sorry for ourselves. I had this big time. And not that I didn't have reason to. I went through a lot of, you know, I went through a lot of drama. I went through a lot of heartache. But when Jesus was on the cross, did he have self-pity? He was, he was working getting somebody else into the kingdom. He didn't say, oh, you know, uh, you know, why is this happening to me and woe is me. He didn't say that. So that's, Jesus is our example. If we have self-pity, it's a total block, a total block. You will not get healing with self-pity if you hold on to self-pity. I mean, God can do whatever he wants, but from, you know, from my experience, no one has been healed with, and held on to self-pity. Um, like I said, um, the author of the book, A More Excellent Way, calls self-pity um, the super glue from hell that binds us to our past. Okay? Amen. So that's self-pity. The other thing which a lot of people don't realize is occultism. Okay, what is occultism? Occultism is, um, it's a lot of things. <laughs> But I do have a list of them, and I have, there's a chapter dedicated to occultism in here. And I'm just going to review the list. Um, it's pretty much using other things, going to other things besides God, like creating its man-made systems and man-made knowledge outside of God. So I'm just going to read some of the, um, when we look to other things for answers except for God. Okay. You know, go to God first. He might tell you to go to the doctor. He might, you know what I mean? But go to God first. All right. So some examples of occultism are horoscopes, astrology, tarot and psychic readings, necromancy, which is consulting the dead, yoga, Pilates, channeling, seances, automatic writing, interpreting omens, divination, channeling spirits, reflexology, karate and other martial arts, kundalini spirit, false prophecy, secret societies, angel worship, and many more. Okay? All right. Um, can I entertain a couple questions or, or are we? Okay. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Yes, sir. I don't, I don't really have a question, but I'd like to follow up on the healing process of the Lord. And it's true that when you have, when you are trying to heal, I had a liver damage. I, I, I had a liver transplant since I was praise the Lord. But praise God. I was going through changes when I was in the process because I kept falling down from morning to the morning. And uh, it was the devil playing, playing with my mind because I had to pass something and I couldn't. I kept going there 
He kept me. Every time I wanted to go to God, he would always come in and say, you know, and someone told me that this is just called his name, Jesus Christ, and he would flee. You know, so I got I got in the habit of calling his name from my heart. Amen. You know, and he was absent. And it's surprising because I never knew he was I thought I knew Christ, but I didn't until I went through this process. That's you right. Know, and it started healing me with my, the situation that I had. Amen. Because when they opened me up in the hospital, they said I had pneumonia. I put pneumonia when they opened my body up and they were getting ready to take the love out. I was told that, you know, I don't know, I was out of it. You know, and I know the Lord was dead because when I came, I was asking the chapter for a Bible. I was just going to speak for the Lord. And I looked up and they had a cross. I had the only cross, a black cross, in my room. And I looked up and I started crying. Because the Lord was telling me something about my life. See, I'm going to be in the back and I don't want to go my life in the arm. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Also, they had two other police and see I was a bad guy. You know, and I stayed 25 years in prison and didn't die. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went through all of this and I found him. He had put me down on that hospital for me to know him. And Amen. ever since then, I healed my body in Christ. Amen. 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 It does. It does. Amen. 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 So believe that if you give it to Christ, He works. He works. He works. The word works. I've turned my life completely around. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad you gave me this opportunity. It must have worked the end to give it to me. Amen. Goodbye. And the healing process. I'm always talking about that. Amen. And I thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to speak to you because you write on point about that. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So when I read the Bible now, Amen. I can jump in with joy. Sometimes I can't stay in it because it's too in the gulf. Yeah. I'm be opening up my mind without giving my heart. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, and I just want to mention we do have books on the back, um, you know, for $10, a donation of $10 or more, and all of the funds will be donated to the Women's Group of Mount Vernon. So if you can stop by and, and support the table. Were there any other questions, comments? No? All right. It's always you do a good presentation, you know, and the, the nature of God and how God works that God did create us. Amen. We just thank you for your research and stuff. So I encourage everyone to just pick up a book Amen. that you wrote Amen. and, um, you know, get some better you know, insight on what it's being.